The leader said, most unhappiness comes when you listen to yourself, but most happiness comes when you talk to yourself. What are you saying to yourself? Because when you're sitting in silence, you hear the world. All day long you hear the world. You hear music that tells you that it's okay to live loosely and do whatever. What are you saying against that so that your mind hears something different? God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Are you saying those things? Are you giving thanksgiving like Jonah did so that you can get delivered from those things? So we have to come against these weeds that are constantly perpetuating into our lives so that they just become a small annoyance and that they don't have a stronghold on our lives. So our first responsibility is our personal growth because life is automatic, but growth is not. We're going to be here, but we make the decision if we're going to grow. And I want to read just a little, um, one of my devotionals. I have a, a God's Word for Students, and it has some devotionals in it. And I was reading this, the Revelations chapter. Um, the devotional had a story that was profound, I thought. And this is what it says. It says, once during a presidential visit to a large city, there was a significant commotion. The motor cab was gliding through crowded streets as flag-waving spectators strained to catch a glimpse of their president. The president was in town. Then without any warning at all, the motor cab slowed to a stop and the Secret Service agent walked briskly over to the door of one of the townhouses along the parade route. The network TV cameras captured the whole bizarre incident as the Secret Service agent repeatedly rang the doorbell of one of the people that lived on the street so that they could go in and talk with the president. The president could talk with his homeowner. But as the reporters saw, nobody opened the door. They said they could hear the TV on, you could hear the music inside. They were obviously in it. Have you ever went to someone's house and you know they're home, but they're not answering the door? It's like, listen, I see you, I can see you sitting in there and I can hear the television. But they, they're not interested in your visit. So the president comes to town, ringing the doorbell of this homeowner, and they're not even answering the door for the president. So none of us, you know, in this, in this devotion was just helping us to reflect that none of us would be foolish enough to close the door if the president really stopped by your house. Most of us would. I mean, there are other people that might close the door. But most of us would take that opportunity if the president stopped by the door to have a personal lunch with you. Pick any president you want for this example, okay? Um, but who will really pass up that opportunity for the president or anyone of significance coming to your house? The point of the devotional is that most of the times, Jesus is knocking on our door and we don't hear him. Mm. Or we choose not to listen. Jesus has a message for us, speaking directly into our, our lives, and we choose not to answer the door. If we knock on the door, Jesus will answer. But when Jesus is knocking on our door here, we don't even pay attention. John saw a revelation of Jesus standing at the door and knocking, and he heard Jesus speak these words. If anyone listens to my voice and opens the door, I'll come in and we'll eat together. But the question they're asking us is, what keeps us from such an amazing offer? Is it that we don't really believe that Jesus wants to spend time with us, or is it because we're afraid of what he might find if he gets into our house? Has anyone ever come to your house and then you try to do like a 10-minute tidy, clean up? Oh, I wasn't expecting to guess, so I want to clean up. Is it because your house isn't in order that you think that you don't want to open the door for Jesus to come in because you're afraid or ashamed of what he will find when he gets there? That's the question that we have to ask. What keeps us from hearing Jesus, his voice knocking at our hearts? Is it distractions? Is it guilt? Is it fear? Is it conflicting messages from society telling us what to do that's in contrary to what God wants us to do? We can turn those things into just minor annoyances or we can let them totally consume our lives. We let them totally consume our lives, we won't hear the knock because our sunlight is blocked. The nutrients are blocked. We can't grow, we're suffocated. We can get the distractions out, then we can actually hear God when he's speaking to us. We can answer the door when Jesus is not. So I just pray that you got something out of what the Lord placed on my heart, that we can really make the decision to set our foundation with God being first, God first, then we can work on our family and help, help our family to grow. Then we can work on our career and work on our business. Then we can do those things. But without the foundation, we don't stand for something we'll fall for anything. And Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy to bring all those things into our lives as distractions and to give us messages that are contrary to what God tells us that he wants us to do. 
my personal relationship with Christ is what I want to grow. I want to have communication with him. And when I have spent, I guess now almost a decade in front of professors, I'm on the edge of my seat, number one, because I spend a lot of money for the education. I want to get everything that it is that they're saying to me. I'm taking notes. I'm studying it. I'm dedicating a whole chunk of my adult life to it. So when I come here on Sundays, I made a decision that our lives are a submission to, to God, and we as a family have made a decision to put our lives into submission to Pastor Clyde as a pastor, that we take his messages very seriously, because God has given him a message. And we're not coming here passively. We're listening to what Pastor Clyde has said, the words that God has placed on his hearts, and we're actively applying those to our lives. So when you see me come here, I have a notebook, I'm taking notes, I'm going back, I'm studying, I'm reflecting on those things, I'm asking God, what is it that you want me to hear from that? And the same way I take the professor seriously, I'm taking this seriously. Amen. This is the foundation for my eternal life. Why would I take that any less seriously than going to a class in college? Or a master's degree, or whatever degree it is. Think about those things. Because God wants us to have this foundation right. That's going to ensure our real happiness. Not getting the degree and getting the whatever it is that we're looking to do, but to have this relationship right. And I ask that God really um, help us to hear those messages when we come here. And I thank you, Pastor Clyde, for letting God use you.